I'm just trying to do the best I can. Was brother mean to you? He needs to be nice, huh? Come on. <laughs> Let's go live stream. Good morning, landing crew. So today is just another day in our house. We're going to get things done. I have my cardiologist appointment today. I'll explain a little bit like why and what's going on um, if you don't know. But it's just kind of morning time. ABA therapy's done, the live stream's done. Hi, baby. Hi. You're so cute. Yeah, you're so cute. Guys, this blood pressure med has me feeling awful. <laughs> While I was in the bath, look what Lonnie made. Nice little brownies. He's such a good husband. <sighs> All right, so what we are doing, I'm gonna pick up Danielle and Danielle's gonna go to cardiologist with me because I don't know if I have time to come drop her off at the house before going, so she's just gonna kind of come with me. But until then, I'm working on a quick thumbnail while the boys are all taking a nap. Is daddy so comfy? <sighs> gotta go to the store after I'm done with all of this. We got a busy, busy day. I'm gonna go get Danielle, and then we're gonna go to the cardiologist. If you are unsure why I'm going to the cardiologist, it is because I had a baby girl about eight months ago. She was my sixth baby. I got hypertension, which is high blood pressure, near the end of my pregnancy with her. And I ended up also developing postpartum preeclampsia, which is basically high blood pressure after you have a baby. I was on blood pressure meds for three months, and then I was able to get off of them. My blood pressure was stable by itself. The shortness of breath continued. Like, it was still going on. I, don't, I didn't know what was going on. Like, even just walking up my stairs, I would get short of breath. So I was referred to a cardiologist because every now and then I would have like kind of a tightening feeling. It wasn't super painful, but it was still there. And so they referred me to a cardiologist that was going to do all these different tests and things like that. Last Friday, out of the blue, my blood pressure started spiking. So at this point, we need to find out what's going on, if it's just random hypertension or if it has something to do with the shortness of breath, exactly what's going on. I already had this appointment, so it just kind of worked out that this happened. Guys, I literally was thinking, where are my keys at? Well, they're right there, Stephanie. And I only had a little bit of gel left, so I thought my hair was gonna look a hot mess, and it is a little bit poofier than normal, but I'm kind of liking it. So maybe I just use way too much gel on my hair. My feet hurt from walking so fast, because I literally did the- Oh, thank you for getting here so quickly. I didn't mean that you had to walk so no, fast. No, the reason why I had to, I was doing it until the bell rang, and I still haven't finished, because it's like 20 questions, but they're like hard, mom, and they're like FSA hard. So do you have to finish it tomorrow? Friday. Friday, okay. Whoa, my hair's poofy. <laughs> yeah, because you were laying on it. Yeah, I was laying down. All right, guys, my echo is done. I thought they were doing the stress test and everything else today, but they're not. And by the way, if you've never had an echo done, it is not for a person that has ADHD. Like laying there was horrible. And having to breathe in and out, in and out. <sighs> rough stuff. But I have my stress test on Friday. Monday's my pulmonary test, which just tests your lungs. Next Thursday, he'll go over the results and I'm on my way to get my blood done. So we're trying to get... We're, we're getting your blood done today too? It's, it'll be quick. Do you want me to drop you off at ho home first? Can we get something to eat? I'll think about feeding you. Maybe. Welcome, welcome. Liam, are you dancing? Naruto! Wait, are you guys not going inside? Where are you guys going? Hi! Alright guys, well we went to the Dollar Tree. We were looking for sensory toys. You've probably already seen that video, but now we have to go into Target to get some things. No one needs nighttime pull-ups. We need bar soap. Just daily stuff that is needed when you're a large family of eight. So that is what we are going to do. But like, side note, Lonnie Jr. got himself a TikTok account. Go follow him. <laughs> Lonnie WP. Lonnie WP. Oh, oh. Oh. Guys, it's happened. They have pumpkin spice eggnog, but Danielle is on a dairy free. They have eggnog, eggnog. Let's not tell Noah. Noah's obsessed with eggnog. There is milk in it. I promise you, it's dairy. Not that milk is pretty. 
Looks like today was another busy but productive day. I got live stream done and I think I'm going to get to bed before 1 a.m. again. So yay me. I have been struggling with insomnia really bad. I kind of battled if I was even going to talk about this on a video because I feel like as moms, we sometimes are embarrassed that we have insomnia and it's not something we should be embarrassed about. A lot of times it's really out of our control, but I also feel like insomnia is kind of used um, interchangeably, kind of like OCD, like you're being so OCD about that or, oh my God, I had the worst insomnia last night. And some people who use the word insomnia probably are correct and they probably do have insomnia, but I feel like it's used a lot and not in the true meaning. Insomnia, in case you do not know, is the inability to fall asleep even if you are tired. A lot of people think it's just like not being able to sleep because you just aren't tired and that's not true. When I have insomnia, I am exhausted, but I literally just can't fall asleep. And then it can also mean just waking up a couple times during the middle of the night, which is something I struggle with as well. So I have both of them and I'm sure there's other types, but those are the two that kind of pertain to me the most and it's really hard when you have special needs children that are constantly waking you up because it kind of messes up your sleep schedule once I'm awake and I'm dealing with Liam or Lex or Noah I'm kind of awake and kind of wired especially if they're screaming and I jolt out of my bed or something whether you're not getting good sleep or you're getting broken up sleep you aren't allowing your body to rest how it should and so it can start affecting your mental health and it's definitely been affecting mine I've been more emotional more stressed more high strung more irritable just more anxiety everything has kind of been uh, I've been working so hard these last couple days to kind of get my sleeping schedule back on track and I've noticed a lot of improvements in myself one I am stuttering less I've talked about in a previous video me having a stutter I feel like when I'm stressed and my anxiety is high I stutter more so I've noticed that's kind of went down some it was worse last week than this week but it can really take a toll on your everyday life, just your your whole mental state. There has been some comments and questions about when do you sleep, you don't ever sleep, and it, it's not like that. Like if I don't go to bed till four or 5 a.m. because I can't sleep, I still have to wake up with the kids when they wake up in the morning. Usually Lonnie will wake up with Danielle and then he'll wake me up because he sometimes goes to bed before I do because I'm usually up working. But ABA gets here for Liam at 9 a.m every morning. <laughs> I'm not going to call ABM be like, ah, well, I couldn't sleep last night. So could you just like postpone it a little bit? No, that that doesn't happen. As soon as Lonnie gets back from taking Danielle to school, I wake up, I make sure Lonnie Jr. is up. Lonnie starts getting Liam ready and it's just kind of a cycle we go through. So it doesn't matter if I did get sleep the night before. I just have to keep powering through the day. There are times I can slip in like an hour or two nap, but that doesn't happen very often. I've just been kind of powering through which has been kind of stressful and kind of hard and has kind of affected me a little bit. I'm just trying to do the best I can. I feel like we're getting into a better routine now. I think that has a lot to do with it too. We're getting into this routine of ABA every morning. We're getting into routine of me live streaming. We're going daily now. Regardless, I wanted to kind of talk about that so maybe if someone else out there is kind of going through the same thing that you are not alone. I think that insomnia can be the worst thing. There are times I've cried over not being able to sleep 
because it affects me. It affects me as a person. It affects me as a mom. It affects me as a wife. It affects me as a creator too. Like I'm not going to be able to give you guys good content if I'm just barely getting through the day, you know? One of the good, I guess, side effects of the medication I'm on for my blood pressure is fatigue. So that's helped out a lot. And I did up my psych meds. So the side effect of that is also fatigue. So I think that's helped kind of get me a little bit tired. But I think taking care of ourselves is really important. Whether you're, you're a mom of one, whether you're a mom of six, whether you're not a mom at all and you're just watching these videos, I think it's important to put ourselves first and take care of ourselves. Over time, again, insomnia can really affect us. I honestly think that that might be a contribution of why my blood pressure spikes because I was going through mounds of stress. I haven't been drinking water like I should. I've been putting junk in my body. I haven't been watching my sodium intake. So all of those together can definitely take a toll on you mentally and physically eventually. So take care of yourself, mamas, and we will see you tomorrow. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there. Heading out to see. And leave the rest be